When you mix some really weird tasting food with owners who have no idea how to run a restaurant, what you get is one hot mess. But after all these years, have things finally turned around for the better, or is the chaos still cooking at Park's Edge? Let's find out. So, in this episode, Chef Ramsay stepped into the chaotic world of best friends turned restaurant owners, Richard and Jorge. Jorge is my best friend. If complete chaos around every corner wasn't enough, a bunch of community drama of unparalleled proportions unfolded as Chef Ramsay attempted to rescue the sinking ship that was Park's Edge in Inman Park, Georgia. So, this is where Chef Ramsay met Richard and his buddy, both with zero restaurant experience, thinking that running a restaurant was a piece of cake. Spoiler alert, it isn't. Literally every freaking episode of the show. The whole place was a goddamn hot mess, and the staff were beyond stressed out. The problem here was that Richard, one of the owners, was more into cracking jokes than actually fixing up the place. They had a couple dollars in their pocket and they're like, hey, let's open up a restaurant. And let me tell you, the kitchen? Let's just say I bet the owners were glad that Osha didn't come sniffing around. And of course, the customers weren't vibing with the food. It's weird and I wouldn't get it again. Did not like the taste, they said it wasn't good. Adding to the chaos, Richard went into some issues with the community itself. There's some deep-seated issues with the restaurant and the community. What's more, they were also serving alcohol without a license. Not sure why they chose to literally break the law and tell everyone on the show, but Richard managed to mess things up even further. And my response was, they don't like us because we're a black-owned restaurant and we're in a white neighborhood. Which, I mean, got any evidence, man? Well, all he actually got was a significant loss of business. And by insinuating that the neighborhood was against people of color, what do you know? The comment backfired. The repercussions were swift, and Park's Edge found itself isolated from the local community. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> now, Jorge, the chef, seemed to be living in his own little world. So the good news is it's not the food. No, right? no, no. no. Well, no. Right? Despite Chef Ramsay probing about the food, Jorge insisted that everything was perfect. Honestly, it's a classic case of denial. That is what it boiled down to. First by seared scallops, avocado egg rolls. Anyway, when Chef Ramsay sat down for lunch, one look at the menu and he was completely confused. From Mexican to Asian and Indian and whatnot, the menu was all over the place. To me, it's Chef Ramsay's just another customer. I mean, as long as he likes my food, we're gonna get along just fine. Of course, he wasn't expecting much, but I can tell you he never expected this, the infamous grilled salad. Now, I'm sure you're picturing some grilled chicken tossed into a decent, if not bland garden salad, right? Well, Chef Ramsay's face contorted into a mix of confusion and horror as he faced a plate of literally grilled lettuce with some weird sauce. I've never thought about it, but it's true. Like, why are we grilling lettuce? You literally cannot make this up. Chef Ramsay couldn't help but draw everyone's attention by proudly displaying his beautifully grilled lettuce. Do you know if they actually grilled the lettuce? If that wasn't funny enough, he then decided to take a bite of the questionable salad, and you won't believe how he reacted. Dry chicken. The salad looks hideous. Why is it so spicy? The problems at Park's Edge were no laughing matter. That's an oyster. <laughs> Honestly, looks like a fossil from Jurassic Park. The next dish that came out were oysters, which were equally disgusting, if not more. Now, imagine how bad it'd be if the owner himself didn't vibe with his own food, huh? A lot of bread. Hello, hey. Here we go again. <clears throat> Something. Oh, you right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The flavor was off, and there was an unwelcome surprise of ruddy texture that left a bad taste in his mouth. It was a culinary crime that even Richard, with all the optimism in the world, couldn't overlook. In fact, the spice added another layer of discomfort, causing Richard to choke. Ain't that a hard pill to swallow, literally. At this point, Chef Ramsay was pretty much done with the tasting. But just then, some awfully plated salmon made its way to his table. Aside from the plate itself, which was beyond messy, a million flavors were all competing for attention at the very same time. Richard, who by this point was embarrassed with the service, offered to walk the plate back to the kitchen. Good riddance. But wait, did I forget to mention Chef Ramsay's reaction? Oh, believe me, he would have been better off if he had given it a pass. Salmon a bed of sticky rice with a green curry beurre blanc. Like, what Jorge thought was a masterpiece was far from it. The rice is just hideous. The spice is ridiculous. And the strawberries and the red onion ragu. Yeah. At this point, the famous chef had seen enough. He stormed into the kitchen to come face to face with the man behind the food, Jorge, but guess what? The dude had the audacity to defend his ridiculous grilled salad. Your food is edible. Whose ever idea it was to grill a Caesar salad was just hideous. It's a comedy of errors, with Jorge insisting that he doesn't need any help in the kitchen, even though it's painfully obvious that he really does. 
All you're doing is you're coming in here, trashing my background as far as where I've been. All the food you ate today was okay? Amidst the chaos, Chef Ramsay uncovered the truth. Jorge wasn't a trained chef, and his lack of qualifications were glaring. What followed next was a reality check that left Jorge in the hot seat. Where did you go out and train before you opened your own restaurant? Oh, I didn't. I didn't. You didn't train? No, not at all. The layers of issues at Park's Edge, from the owner's relationship troubles to the delusions in the kitchen, were laid bare. The food was overcomplicated, and the staff was completely overworked. Clearly, as a team, they had underestimated what it took to really run a restaurant. He doesn't have any right to come in here and talk to me in that sort of manner. However, the famous chef had to give it to him straight. Jorge wasn't a fit for the restaurant, let alone the kitchen. You see, it's not just about culinary expertise. A qualified chef should possess the skills necessary for effective kitchen management, ensuring that the kitchen operates smoothly while adhering to hygiene and safety standards. Their ability to develop appealing menus, understand flavor profiles, and introduce innovative dishes contributes significantly to the restaurant's success. And Jorge didn't possess any of these traits. With the messy-ass kitchen out of the way, it was time to address the neighborhood drama. Richard revealed to Chef Ramsay a list of issues. This included the lack of permit for the gazebo, missing business licenses, and not to mention that pesky liquor license. The community problems kicked off with their illegal alcohol operation, attracting newspaper reporters like a magnet. We erected a tent in our parking lot without a proper permit. To make things worse, the absence of a liquor license and business permits signaled a glaring misstep. First neighbors came out and said the neighborhood could do better, uh, we were not good enough for the neighborhood. As the famous chef and Richard peeled back the layers, they discovered how race got pulled into the picture in the first place. So you said the neighborhood was racist? Yes, exactly. Now that's a serious setback that can drown any flourishing business. The discussion then ran deeper into the community's reaction. The lack of proper licenses pushed the newspaper reporters to sense something fishy was going on. That's when Richard, probably feeling backed into a corner, started claiming that the neighborhood was racist. Still, it was really appalling to see Richard resorting to those kind of accusations. I don't know what to do or what to say or how to reach out properly. The famous chef was curious to find out more. He really wanted to know if there was a personal incident in the last three years that fueled Richard's perception. And lo and behold, although Richard admitted that it was a misguided statement, the damage was done. Even the statement I made was, was stupid, and I don't know how to fix it at this point. He was reluctant to reach out for help in the aftermath, probably because he realized that fixing this mess was going to be difficult to say the very least. But there were even more problems that plagued this restaurant. During the dinner service, Chef Ramsay caught Richard taking a quick cigarette break. Not exactly an uncommon thing in the restaurant biz, but definitely one that Chef Ramsay wasn't in the mood to see. It was very embarrassing, I'm not gonna lie. It was like a, a parent punishing a child. Speaking of, when Chef Ramsay decided to investigate the kitchen, he realized that the cooking staff, aside from Jorge, of course, were the restaurant's singular saving grace. As for Jorge, he was having a tough time handling the heat. This is the Midwell parlor right here. From dropping utensils to just overall looking overwhelmed, Jorge was struggling to keep up on a good day. The experienced staff tried their very best to pick up his slack, but the kitchen was far from smooth sailing. What are you guys working on right now? We need a scallops on 36. I'm, I'm not waiting on the scallop. What scallop are you? Eventually, with only a fraction of the ordered dishes actually making it to the customers, most of them ended up being sent back. Oh, I mean, it's really spicy. It's raw in the middle. Meanwhile, Chef Ramsay's eyes were on Jorge. He wanted to see how he handled the heat in the kitchen, and to no one's surprise, Jorge was having a tough time steering the ship. I can also that to customers. What is that? That's cool. As the night progressed, Chef Ramsay could see the real deal at Park's Edge. A kitchen in a mess, an overwhelmed chef, and a dining experience that wasn't living up to expectations. I thought you owned the place, ran the place. I did. I'm just struggling to see a chef right now. Honestly, it seemed like the customers were getting more than they bargained for, and not in a good way. I'm doing all I can at this point. It's our first time. It's to be our last. The complaints never stopped coming. The food was too dry, too spicy, some dishes were raw, others served cold. Everything except for a perfectly cooked, perfectly balanced dish that came out of the kitchen. Now, imagine you're one of the servers. You're moving to and fro trying to make your guest dining experiences enjoyable, but the kitchen was making that outlook really bleak. Is there any way you can go to the table and do what you can do? Where do I go? Where do I go beyond that? The servers were frustrated, and rightfully so. The kitchen's performance wasn't just affecting the quality of service, it was hitting them where it hurts most, their tips. In the restaurant world, tips can make or break a server's day, and they were feeling the pinch like never before. 
To add to the chaos, guess where Richard was during this culinary crisis? Richard does not like to deal with the complaints. Be as servers are running this restaurant. No, he wasn't in the thick of things trying to salvage the situation. He was hiding out back or maybe taking a breather outside, leaving those servers to deal with the fallout. What a coward. It's a classic case of passing the buck, and it wasn't helping anyone. Not the customers, not the servers, and certainly not the reputation of Park's Edge. I've never seen two owners that are more clueless at running a place than these two idiots, I'm telling you. But why does this all matter? Well, obviously, customer satisfaction is the heartbeat of any restaurant. Satisfied customers keep coming back, spread the word, and that's what keeps the doors open. When the food isn't up to par, the servers are left to juggle complaints on their own, and, well, that's a recipe for disaster. All right, folks, have a good night. After seeing the service go spiraling out of control, Chef Ramsay didn't hold back as he confronted Richard about his seemingly absent role in the restaurant. I, I don't even know where to begin with the tables. I don't even know where to begin. Oh, come on, Richard. He started questioning Richard about his responsibilities and the conspicuous absence when it came to managing the customer dissatisfaction. A restaurant isn't just a place for good food, right? It's an experience, and at that point, the experience was falling short of expectations by a long shot. As the famous chef continued to investigate, the real impact of Richard's hands-off approach became extremely evident. Customers, already frustrated with the culinary roller coaster happening in the kitchen, were left waiting for their food. Soon, the frustration reached the tipping point, and in a dramatic yet entirely understandable move, some customers decided they'd had enough. With the service coming to a close, Chef Ramsay headed to the kitchen to uncover more issues. What a mess. Asparagus here, rubbery. Oh, come on. That's gotta be a month old. And believe me, what he found there wasn't great. From old and moldy smells to spoiled chicken and dishes that had seen better days, Chef Ramsay certainly had his work cut out for him if he wanted to get this place turned around. Is that in there? Oh. However, Jorge went all out in denial mode. He even talked back to Chef Ramsay, which was like challenging a lion in its own den. I mean, doesn't he realize that people's health were on the line here? Why are you taking my product They're and you're moldy. Away? Hey, look. Okay. Just... Want to see some more? Jorge, in a fit of delusion, insisted that everything was made on the very same day. But let's be real, we all know the truth. It's staring at us right in the face after all, right? Excuses kept flowing, and honestly, it's frustrating when someone can't see the seriousness of the situation before their very eyes. I'm telling you that I'm not gonna serve this. So you're, you're saving it for what? Things got heated, and Chef Ramsay decided to take a stand. He told Jorge to stop pointing fingers at everyone else and take a good hard look at the actual problem. You're a joke. You're Listen. Kidding. Right. You're a joke too, man. Fast forward to the next morning, Chef Ramsay gathered the troops, the staff, while the owners, including the ever-denying Jorge, watched from the comfort of their surveillance cameras. Chef Ramsay learned that Richard liked to drink when he was working, which might be fun for him, but it was a nightmare for everyone else trying to get stuff done. When we're having problems, because he's been drinking all day. If he really wanted Park's Edge to be a better place, he needed to be more than just a smiling face. He needed to be a leader like any responsible owner should. You see, the front of the restaurant responsibilities extend way beyond the mere meet and greet interactions with customers, right? While creating a pleasant atmosphere for diners is an essential aspect of the job, it's equally important for those in the front of house to be attentive, efficient, and responsive to the customer's needs throughout their dining experience. This includes handling complaints, ensuring timely service, and maintaining a positive atmosphere. But Richard? Well, he didn't really bring any of these qualities to the table whatsoever. I know more about running a restaurant than either one of them together. Ouch. Pair that with a stubborn chef who's just out of culinary school and you get Park's Edge. He's like fresh out of culinary school. The real bomb dropped when the employees revealed that Jorge didn't take criticism very well. Negative feedback? Forget about it. He dished out personal comments calling them dumb and stupid. Every playground insult you can think of, he was slinging. And this left the employees practically begging for an intervention. You cannot give or write any negative feedback or you will get lashed out. A couple weeks ago in the kitchen about how fat I'd gotten. One day he snapped at me and I was just like, don't talk to me like that. Now that they were out with the truth, Chef Ramsay dropped the real bomb. They had been under surveillance the entire time, with the bosses watching from the other side. The employees were shaken to the core. Fear took over because, let's face it, nobody wants that kind of drama, right? You're watching. Oh my god. I'm gonna get them and bring them out. Okay. On the bright side, it was a wake-up call, a reality check, and maybe, just maybe, the intervention Park's Edge desperately needed. But would the restaurant rise up to the occasion? It, it touched me um, deeply, and uh, yeah, I was enlightened. 
I was, I was in line. After the kitchen chaos and reality checks, there came a turning point at Park's Edge. The owners, Richard and Jorge, got a dose of reality that day. Richard even got emotional. This is really deep for me, man. I've always been a pillar. And then there was Jorge, who finally realized his shortcomings, apologized to the staff, and pledged to turn over a new leaf. I really want to apologize um, to you guys for being unfair. But that wasn't enough. If they want to stand a chance at revival, they had to rebuild all the burned bridges they had with the community. From Park's Edge Restaurant in Inman Park, and we are delighted to have you gentlemen with us. The famous chef urged the owners to go on local news for a public apology to their neighbors. It was the very first step to rebuild trust, and they had to earn it brick by brick. Now onto the menu. This was Chef Ramsay's area of expertise, and he left no stone unturned to fix it. This new menu is easy to execute. The new menu was a total game changer, a breath of fresh air that the staff couldn't stop talking about. Wow. Oh my god, this is beautiful! During the relaunch, as orders started flooding into the kitchen, Jorge stepped up, and the food raced out to the tables, hitting them fast and hitting them right. You drive it. Drive, Let's drive, go. drive. Yes? Yes, yes. Yay, the food is coming out so quick. The night ended on a high note, with Chef Ramsay dropping some final words of wisdom on the owners. We have come a long way, and this is just the start. In the end, it's not just about fixing a kitchen or the menu. It was about rebuilding trust, fostering a sense of unity, and creating a dining experience that resonated with the community. Customers are happy. This is a completely different environment in the restaurant. I'm actually happy. Park's Edge, with its fresh look and simplified menu, was prepared for a brand new beginning. Yeah, two shrimp and grits. Thank you. Second and bacon. Our future for Park's Edge is not guaranteed, but I definitely have a very, very strong feeling that we are on our way to success. In the weeks that followed, Richard and Jorge, the owners of Park's Edge, remained committed to community outreach and the efforts proved fruitful as the business began to pick up. Richard took on a more active role on the restaurant floor, while Jorge embraced the new changes introduced to the new menu. Post-show, the duo opted to retain most of Chef Ramsay's alterations, but decided to reintroduce some customer favorites back onto the menu. This strategic blend aimed to maintain the essence of the restaurant while incorporating the positive shifts suggested by Chef Ramsay. However, the aftermath wasn't as rosy as you'd hope. Yelp reviews were mixed, with negative comments predominantly revolving around service-related issues and occasional inconsistencies in menu items. TripAdvisor echoed similar sentiments, with dissatisfaction often stemming from reported lapses in service. Despite efforts to bounce back, Park's Edge was on knife's edge in their health inspection records. In both February and October of 2011, they fell short of meeting required standards. Ultimately, in early of 2014, Park's Edge closed its doors for good. The decision was mainly influenced by the expiration of their lease in November of 2013. Reports circulated that the owners were exploring options for a new location to reopen, but unfortunately, the restaurant never saw revival. Surprisingly, the restaurant's website remained active until 2020, six years after its closure. Funnily enough, a Reddit user found a random Facebook post which was posted in November of 2020, which said, inviting a group of local runners to come in for a discounted meal. But the restaurant had already been closed for seven years at the time. Apparently, their former location is currently occupied by Victory Sandwich Bar, according to the same user. As for Richard and Jorge, their LinkedIn pages haven't been updated for ages. Both their profiles reveal Park's Edge as their very last job. Either they simply didn't bother to update it, or they're still struggling to move on. So, what do you have to say about this wild journey? Let me know in the comments section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to visit my social media pages, drop a like, and turn on my post notifications if you haven't already. Plus, if you thought this video was crazy, wait till you see my next video right here since it's even better.